this is Karhat or Super One. And uh, he's been working with me for a while on this total relaxation and kind of becoming invisible through super relaxed movements and faking. And here he's trying to explain to me how uh, when you fake, your opponent is going to respond. So sometimes they respond by going backwards, which you need to prepare for. And sometimes they stand in, and so you want to kick. So using this forward check, basically you either get them to back up, block, or stand in, and then your response is based on their response. So he's like, if they block or stand in, just kick immediately. So you need to um, be able to change your mind or make that decision really quickly um, upon using that forward check. So he's talking to the uh, security guard right there. He's asking him a question about turning the air on. So he's saying that when the opponent puts their leg up to check, a teep is better than what I'm doing, which is getting my leg out of the way. Because they're on one leg. So I'm trying to do things that he's been working with me on, which is um, attacking his standing legs, and if he blocks on one side, you go after that standing leg and you can switch. So now he's going to demonstrate what he's been trying to tell me. So see how he's creeping forward? And if he puts that leg up as he's coming forward, he's on one leg and I can counter. So he has to use it as a realistic fake in order to get the response out of me, which I'm not doing. I'm just kind of using it as a timing mechanism. And there I missed from like an inch away. And I keep cross-blocking, which is totally not it. If I'm using my forward check as a fake, I should be able to use that forward check as a block, which is what it is when he kicks on that side. But I keep cross-checking because my weight transfer isn't right. So it's just something to work on. Like, you mess around with it to figure out those errors and how to make those adjustments. See how he can bounce up into that block at any second? It's so fast. And he's at like half speed right now. So I'm not stepping on those kicks. So he's telling me to back up. If I fake, he goes. So then I kick. So he's actually trying to tell me that using that forward check is better as you yourself are going backwards rather than coming forward. I just used it in a fight coming forward really successfully. So anytime Karahat tells me don't do something, he doesn't actually mean like 100% never do this. He's making adjustments based on what he's looking at right there, and he'll change his mind sometimes like in the session or in the next one. So he's trying to make a point here. It's not never use it coming forward and only use it going backwards. He's just trying to teach me to feel it in these two contexts because of how the fake is supposed to be affecting your opponent. So see how I kind of have this like in-out rhythm? Like I go forward, but then I actually just take a few steps back. They're almost a little bit stumbly. He doesn't do that. He's like a rubber band being stretched all the time. He doesn't ever lose ground, even though he'll like bend back, almost like pulling the string of a bow or something. If you look at the difference in our feet and like how we how we take space forward and backward, <laughs> do it how he does it. It's really beautiful. See how he just gets barely out of the way for that teep? And it takes the power out of mine. And then because he barely got out of the way, I've extended myself and I'm off balance on the end of my teep, which is what I'm now doing with him teeping them on the other end.
When I'm tracking him around like this, I'll kind of lose track. Like I'm, I'm focusing on one thing and tension will just kind of creep into what I'm doing and it makes everything harder. So anytime something's not working, the first thing to check, the like check engine light, is how tense you are. <laughs> but I love his teaching style, which is basically sparring all the time. Like you just learn something and use it in context immediately over and over and over again. It's super repetitive, but in play. Like it's not a drill. <laughs> His face when he's creeping in and his smile when he's going backwards is one of my favorite things. <laughs> so there, the extension on his teeth, because I moved slightly out of the way, puts him in this position that's vulnerable so that as I step back, if I'm ready to spring forward, I can counter him. <laughs> he just imitated my tense move over to the side to throw the hook. Uh, which is basically like yelling, I'm about to hook you. So uh, relaxation is how you hide that. S smaller movement? Some, smaller, I'm small, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing that. Yeah. Oh, see how he doesn't even bring that arm back at all? But he brings the opposite side shoulder, the opposite shoulder forward. It's very fast. A lot of what Karahat does looks like it doesn't have a lot of power. Um, it definitely does. He's going maybe like 40% with me, and there are times that even that 40% is just like a, I don't want that. See how he made me miss on that as I was kind of like coming forward? That's just barely moving out of the way. And he's immediately like a bobbing back forward. His weight transfer okay. is always ready to come back forward. See how when he moves backwards, he's taking power out of my strikes. When I move backwards, I'm kind of getting stopped, like I'm being interrupted. He never seems interrupted by being hit by me. Here he's complaining because I switched my stance. He switches a stance, so the problem is not stance switching. The problem is that when I bring that forward check to the front and then come down, he can hit my open side because I haven't done anything to stall him or interrupt him. So if you're going to do this switching stance that I'm doing, if I'm going to step down with that foot, you have to interrupt your opponent with something to keep them from being able to kick your open side as you step forward. It's a vulnerable position to be in when you're switching stance. Like at the moment of switching your stance is vulnerable. He's worked with me a few times where he switches a stance by like walking forward or backward and wants me to like hit that open side. So you just like wait for it and tag it. He does that kind of as a drill golden, and it baby, emphasizes golden. how easy it is to get that point if you're watching for it. So that's what he's trying to get me to be aware of um, on the defensive. And again, I'm not able to block on that side because of where my weight is. So I'm just trying to counter back faster. Oh, man. So he's saying that I'm stopping my hook. He's like, you don't have to go so wide out. You can keep that front side to the front. And just by shifting your back shoulder forward, you get the power on that rotation. Here, I'm trying to do a move that he really likes, which is where you like go to punch the body really smoothly, and if the opponent moves out of the way, you just extend into a kick. That is what I was trying to do. I end up like hiking my kick like a cheerleader, like I make an L shape, um, 
And so I end up stunting both the punch and the kick. So it's really important when you're doing that to like unfold the weapons as you go rather than cramping both Golden, of them. baby. Kevin is saying golden. He's yeah. reminding me that my kick is coming out too wide. The kick should basically come straight up the opponent's body and then turn over at the last second. It comes right out the same way the forward check does. And it's a new technique for me, so I lose track of it under stress. But it's easy to be reminded and go back into it. It's not a difficult technique. It just needs to become more um, natural. So here oh, he's then. coming very wide. <laughs> there are trainers who just gradually put more pressure on you by like uh, hitting you back or taking up space or something like this. He creates more and more tension in me as we go by just taking those millimeters of space that takes the power out of my punches. So he actually causes stress by making me miss, which is a very interesting teaching tool. So he's telling me to follow him, but not follow by changing stance. <laughs> when he imitates me, you can see how he interprets what I'm doing. <laughs> that forward step looks very um, accidental to him. It's like falling downstairs or something. There, I'm piking that kick again. Which actually unhinging, like letting the leg extend out. I get more power on it, like you don't have to worry about being close. You step if you're too far away, and if you're really, really close, you just let it unfold on its own and it kind of goes through the target. Here he's having me step over to the outside of someone's guard and they're kind of coming forward with their hands out. I have a hard time with doing the step and then the kick, which, see how he pushes me out of the way and gets himself into my blind spot with one motion? And then because he's in my blind spot, when he launches that kick, there's a lot of power in it. Whereas the way I'm doing it, I end up stuffing the kick. See how I'm trying to like turn over too much on that? It's because I'm not getting into his blind spot. I'm not getting over to the side outside of his jab. See how long his kick looks, even though we're the same distance from each other and we're basically the same height? But his looks much longer and is much longer. So the reason the length of his kick is important when you're looking at this is when you see me miss by like a foot when <laughs> I'm standing a foot away, his has more reach. Like he has another six inches that he can go to by the way he turns his foot and the way he extends his hip. And that's because of this golden kick of bringing it up the opponent's body line first. So even if they try to get out of the way, you have this like extra extension. His in and out right here, when it gets a little bit more fast paced, is so pretty. It's what he's trying to get me to do. Um, and when he does it, instead of mirroring him, I actually get a little bit intense. But he's leading by example. He's trying to show me how this like constant elasticity is really hard to deal with. That's, that's his imitation of my punch and kick that I'm piking on. You can see how he just keeps his body kind of like crouched. And so everything is short. So he taught me this thing where you're in your stance and then you actually kind of like gallop forward and switch your stance and land what was your front hand as a cross. And here he's correcting it 
from what I was doing because I was gaining absolutely no ground and basically telegraphing it. So that you just walk forward. See how smooth, how he basically just walks forward. Karahat's sound effect is fop, fop. And I like it. Nobody else makes that sound. But you can hear how for him, the strike is not power. It's like um, a wind shift or something. Fop, fop. <laughs> He's laughing at me because I almost did what he asked me to do, but turned it into a like stutter step at the last second. See the length he gets on that kick? It's interesting that he's teaching me this length because as short fighters, being on the inside is advantageous for us. Like you want to get close because you cut off your opponent's length. But he's showing me how as a short fighter, how to have more length. He's trying to show me where to kick on the leg. He's hitting my IT band and it sucks. But so he's interrupting by hitting the leg over and over again. And then he fakes the leg kick and goes to the hook on the opposite side instead. Basically, the more times you can tag that leg before doing the hook, the better chance you have that the opponent is gonna then block it and be on one leg, which makes that hook very open. It's pretty cool that you can use landed strikes as setups for what you're really trying to do. I think boxers do that a lot. Um, I don't think about it a whole lot, unless I'm in this context. But a leg kick is not a high scoring point, so you basically use these lower scoring points to set up for something bigger. It's like using a jab to set up for a cross. He wanted me to step over to the side there, and I tried to trip him instead. Um, see how he comes outside of me? He steps to the side instead of forward. I'm coming forward, which is why I'm failing to get the angle on that. <laughs> I cheated there by just hooking his leg and walking. But you come almost lateral to make that move work which is the same movement he does, it's the same footwork he does for like a head kick. So it's actually a nice move to practice over and over again because then you can use it as two different things and fake your opponent out. His tiny adjustments are so pretty. So here he's showing, again, how your opponent can counter you if you switch stance non or without the consciousness of what you're vulnerable to as you do that. So I do this thing that drives him crazy which is that I have a slight in and out, right? So I'm like snapping in to punch him, but then I basically stand in the same spot. So you either need to move back enough that you can slingshot, or you need to cover distance with it. But I'm doing something in between those that doesn't help, that ends up like standing right in a really vulnerable spot. So he's trying to get me to have more of this rubber band snap. Watch how when he throws a strike, he has this like snap back. When I throw the strike, I actually, if you watch my back, I'm in the same spot after I throw the strike. Same spot. And 
And then even when he's getting out of the way of my strikes, he has this like weight shift back into my space, which forces me to either create the same distance that I want to be at, or it just kind of pressures me a little bit. Look at how he's interrupting my hand with his front hand. That's what he wants me to be doing. It's small, but it, it shifts someone's awareness. So he's showing me how to use the forward check and bring it back. It's the same as after you kick, how you have to bring the kick back to the starting position. It's coming back to neutral. So there it's coming back, which allows it to be more of a fake. Gives me more options every time I bring it back. It's really, the way he moves is like when you're digging sand next to uh, waves and it just keeps filling <laughs> that same space every single time you dig it out. I'll dig out space by pushing him back or like kicking him or something and he just refills that space immediately. He's making fun of how my kick has no power because I'm like not bringing my leg back on the parry. See how he parries my arm and his leg comes back so that when he kicks with it, there's power. <laughs> not like that. So here I'm switching, I'm bringing the leg back, but I'm not stepping into his blind spot the way that I need to be. So it's a slight improvement, but not a great improvement. It's not the whole thing yet. Look at his tiny, tiny movements. He never stops. It's like what I'm doing is more percussive. And then I just stand in the same spot. When he was telling me about it, I was like kind of aware of what he was saying, but when I'm watching it, I can totally see what he's talking about. He's like water, like he's never, he's never in the same spot. He's always moving around, even if it's tiny, tiny incremental shifts. His teep is really long. It kind of like flows forward and it's a little bit reachy. Uh, but he has control of it the entire time. When he lands it, it is shockingly painful for how uh, like reachy it looks. He hits with the ball of his foot and his toes like right into your bladder. It's really painful. See how he moves with the kick? He actually doesn't even have to grab yeah, it circle. because he moves so perfectly in its trajectory, like away from it. See how he didn't even catch it until the last second? He goes in a circle though. It's a circle, It's like not a, sideways. catching it's a ball a into your like base tournament, how you just kind of like scoop it. He's saying it's too slow there. See how lateral that movement is? And as he steps over, he's preparing to come back the other direction with that kick. So he told me I was going backwards instead of sideways. And now I'm like pulling on his leg, which you don't need to do. There needs to be no tension at all upon grabbing that kick. It's like having an egg and a spoon. It's like super gentle, but because he's following the trajectory, he can like 
pull me in a direction without actually pulling my leg. So, because I'm kind of moving backwards instead of sideways, I'm not doing that lateral step that allows me to then use that leg to kick him. It's the same concept of when he's parrying to the side and bringing that leg back so that you can kick with it, except you're bringing your leg to the side so that you can snap back with it. So I'm starting to remember that forward check a little bit more. I would kind of left it by the wayside. <laughs> so there I faked and then went, whereas I should have just used the fake because of his response. It's like a shortcut. He puts his leg up like that to uh, invite me to his opening. See how he brings his body over his leg there? When you do that, you can't come back. Like, if your weight goes over your leg too much, you can't snap back. So he's showing how to turn it into more of like a lunge. So I'm like, don't throw your head forward. See how his head stays kind of upright? Don't float your chin. Like, you don't want your head, like, head's dispensering up. You'll get hit like that. But you don't want to dive forward with your head. Like, your weight shouldn't go over your legs. Or in front of your legs, I guess is what I mean. <laughs> Here's his complaint about how I stop. See how he snatches back like he's grabbing something? So he wants me to step harder, but then bring my weight back like a snap. Look at his legs when he does it, because that's how he transfers his weight. So I'm doing it a little bit too much like a cross, whereas he is able to pull his weight back onto his back leg really easily. And then if he doesn't pull it back onto his back leg, he can kick because his weight is on the front foot. <laughs> My tension versus his total fluidity. See how he's turning that into two motions to imitate me? And then I do exactly what he just told me not to do. <laughs> they should flow into each other. He likes this little angle over on the kick, the leg kick. It's so fast. So he's saying that the way I'm doing it, you kick and then you stop. Whereas the way he's doing it, it flows into the next move. He hops, like he goes aerial for a second. So there's that fake. So I'm faking the leg kick. <laughs> <laughs> See how his, his standing leg stays in the middle of it's my stance? That's what he's trying to, try to get me hard. to avoid. You have to step over to the side. Part of it is that I'm trying not to throw the kick very hard. I'm trying to have control of it the whole time. You can totally control it with that little hop. Just don't nail the leg. It's a little bit stingy, but it's much faster. <laughs> this, is, this 
This is one of my favorite Kara hot moves, which is where you catch the teep, step in, and then you kind of like, you trip them not quite like how I just did it. You don't roll them over your leg. That's literally the technique, but you have to move your own body so that you're not doing a judo throw. But I get all tense when I'm trying to do it, whereas he just kind of, it's the same as catching that kick where he gets out of the way. He like guides you down. I bring my butt back in order to take the tension out of his teeth, and then I don't bring it back in to step forward to uh, roll him over. So he's showing how you can do it on both sides. And I'm aware that I'm leaving my butt back, but I like can't figure it out in the timing of doing the actual move. See how he brings it back to absorb? And then he kind of pulls me into it. Do you see how slick he is? As he steps into me, like I'm already starting to trip myself as he's just moving in. He's saying that when you catch the kick, when you get out of the way a little bit, the opponent is already getting stretched out. Like their teep is already extended. So they're already off balance, so it doesn't take a lot for you to like roll them over. See how he didn't even grab the leg? And he could t totally knock me over with that. So see how I didn't have to catch it? He's saying the opponent's gonna flow, like they're gonna follow because they've extended their teeth. They don't have control of it anymore because you've gotten slightly out of the way. Almost. <laughs> So here again, you just go right back into the like methods and uh, I don't know the system that he's been working with me on. It, you just flow back into it, and it's super repetitive so that you can get those movements down. But you don't isolate them. You have to do it in the context of moving all around the ring and doing all of these other things, so that you see when it's open. See how I have to see when that punch is open by his leg being up? Like, I have to associate his being on one leg with these combinations of openings. Part of what makes Karahat Karahat is that his eyes are incredibly fast. Like, he just sees things so much faster than everyone else. It's like he's Quicksilver and, like, everything's slow motion for him. He's trying to teach me that by getting me to recognize these openings without, like, breaking it down. And again, he's showing me how to come over laterally on that kick. One, to protect myself so that someone doesn't just cross you as you're trying to kick the leg. But also because it hides the kick. I do these things backwards. It's I laugh about it, but it's also really frustrating that I rush at times when I need to be really fluid, and then I'm slow at times that I need to be really quick. So I rush everything between strikes, and then I make my strikes really slow because I'm trying to control them. He's the exact opposite of that. Nothing is rushed in between strikes, so he'll kind of like glide over to the side and then snap the kick. And it gives him this quality of invisibility because of how relaxed it is. See how he's, he just looks like he's like, I'm just going to go over here now. And you're like, that's fine. And then you're getting nailed in the IT band. I get all tense like right before I do it. That's what telegraphing is, is tension. Have you ever done that before? 
He taught me like in our first lesson. Oh. So he actually showed me this kick maybe the first time we ever worked together. Um, I definitely did not get it back then. And now he's like putting in the details of how to work it into the whole system, how to make it fast and smooth and invisible. <coughs> See how when he glides over to the side, it's not rushed, but then the kick is very fast at the end of it. That's where the little snap is. It hurts. <laughs> it's very stingy. I'm turning it into two things. See how I went to the side and stopped? He brings his one foot to where the other foot was standing. It's almost like a skip knee on the bag. He's still, he's like, why are you stopping? It's like a millisecond. Ask him where to hit. But he can see it. Ask, ask so the master. So you get the side of the leg and a little bit behind the leg. It's not a small target, but your foot kind of wraps around to the side and the back, and that's what makes it painful. So you don't have to worry about like hitting the exact spot just above the knee or just below the hip or whatever. It's a pretty long band. But getting that correct angle and letting your foot kind of wrap around um, makes it an easier target than you would think. So I've forgotten my forward check again. This is a move that he showed me, I think, in our last lesson, and I'm having a really hard time with it. <laughs> so he just showed me how to turn that wicked kick in the leg into what they're expecting, and then you actually just hit down low on their leg and trip them instead. So see how it doesn't matter whether I'm standing still or moving? If I'm moving, that's when he can trip me really easily. <coughs> so he's just explaining to me that I like to come forward. If I come forward, the opponent moves backwards. So you move sideways, you move laterally, and they don't move, or they move forward, but they're not going to go backwards. It's like a blind spot. He's so quick, like he's totally talking about how the way that you move is going to either make your opponent move backwards, or not. And so you decide how you're going to move, whether you want your opponent to move backwards for the strike you're about to throw or not. It's very like five moves ahead kind of fighting. It's amazing because this is not my style. Like my style is actually I'm going to take this shot <laughs> to cover the distance and be able to land my own. But I can do this, like it feels really good to do this style that is not what's natural to me, but it feels natural as I start to do it. So that's what's really cool about adopting his system and learning it the way that he teaches it and doing all of these things, is that it doesn't feel like it goes with my natural style, but it stitches together really well. <laughs> So see how now I'm waiting for his check to go up? And then I'm coming around to his standing leg. <laughs> Basically, you can just keep stinging people. Uh, Lawrence Kenshin has a really good... F no. 
Jack Slack has a really good phrase for it. He calls it a trade-off. So instead of like, you're open to this when you do that, it's a trade-off. So you look at what anyone's opening is as you're doing something and punish it. But you're aware of what yours are as well. So now I'm going after his standing leg. And he's like, no, you should have gone after the other one because of how he was standing. See how that causes him to kind of bend forward? And then I can go after that one as I come to the side. So he's telling me to change all the time. Like, don't do the same thing over and over again. Feel all those different angles. I did exactly what we've just been working on, but he wasn't happy with it because I didn't set it up. So he actually complains to me when I start doing the same thing over and over again. He's like, not the same thing forever, like work it into everything else. So I'll do the same leg kick like 10 times in a row because I'm trying to get the technique right. But for him, you can't get it right unless you're working it into all the other movement. Like, you can't isolate things out that much. Like, he isolates it out to show me one or two mistakes I'm making, but then you have to, like, put it into the flow. So again, I'm not snapping back on my punches. Like, I'm just staying in the same spot. Like, I'm coming forward with the punch, and then I'm just a sitting duck. He's going to show me. <laughs> His face when he's like, why would you stand here still? I'm t totally snapping the arm back and not shifting my weight back. So I'm still in the same spot. If you look at my back you can see how I'm just staying in the same spot. If you look at his back, you can see the elasticity that he's talking about. <laughs> see how the, the arm is snapping back, but the body is staying in the same spot? That's what he's complaining about. Yeah, I'm just, I'm like, coming here. And I'm like, I'm coming back. <laughs> but my body's not. <laughs> I did the same thing just from farther away. <laughs> you know what that is? It's not fighting with my feet. It's like trying to just use my arm. All of this movement, all of it comes from the feet. People who say there's no footwork in Muay Thai are completely full of shit. It's like 90% footwork. Because <laughs> it's your weight shift. It's balance and weight transfer. <laughs> See how when my arms go down, my relaxation goes up? That's why I've been training with my arms down, like just flopping them at my sides. Obviously you then need to be prepared to guard as you get closer, but find the things that cause you to relax and do that to work on the techniques. So I'm starting to work that fake in a little bit more just with, my, with pulling my weight forward. And then he's not going backwards, so I should be firing faster. But I'm kind of like waiting to see what he's going to do in a much slower fashion than I need to be. I'm like coming to this yes. point stopping. So I'm yeah, overdoing stop, yeah. my like lean to the side on that hook. I actually did this in my last fight. And the girl totally saw it and just teed me. She was like, fuck that. And this is totally why. He's, he's showing me how that super lean over and then stopping uh, telegraphs the move instead of being a fake. So 
So see how the lateral movement for that kick and the lateral movement for that punch are the same, which is why you can, you can feel that. fake people out with them. It's good. You one feel for the it. other. And one is low and one is high. So they're actually really good to use interchangeably. Same thing Chai talks about, about how everything is close. Yeah. You have to learn two, two steps before you make it one step. So this is something that Chuck Chai was talking about yeah. before, which is that you'll learn a movement as two steps, and then as you get better at it, it becomes one, right? So it's like things start out as two syllables, and then you can kind of like work them into one sound. So my stuff still has like percussive beats in it, but those will get smoothed out by the way that Karahat is teaching me with this like constant testing and movement. And really what hides it is becoming more relaxed. He actually gets really happy when I get him something that he wasn't expecting. He's genuinely happy when he's surprised by something. Um, sometimes he'll get me back for it, though, if it was, like, <laughs> really good news. <laughs> he likes that. That's how he taught me that um, foot trip the other time, is you, like, kick the leg, you, like, pull the leg out and then strike on top of it. And when I tried to do that earlier, I was thinking too hard about it, and I kept stunting myself, but when I put it into the flow of everything else, it came out, and it surprised him. So that's why you learn things in sparring. This thing that I'm doing with my uh, shoulders and my hands, where I'm like trying to like go side to side to hide my rhythms... I know. ...is not what he's doing. <laughs> And I'm kind of standing in one spot, and he's tolerating it for right now. But it's getting me to kind of like into the headset of using weight shift as the fake. He uses forward and back, whereas I'm kind of doing this side to side thing. Nice. <laughs> His timing on that. And now, as I'm starting to get my flow, I'm starting to stand too far away again. I'm setting up too far away. And so I'm missing by like two inches at a time when he just barely moves out of the way. So I'm coming straight in, and he's trying to remind me to move laterally. So here, I'm doing the same step over to the side that he's nailing his front leg before, but he switched his stance, so now I'm still hitting his front leg, but on the inside instead of the outside. So it's essentially the same target and essentially the same movement, but it's just determined by what your opponent's stance is. Bop. <laughs> Bop and fop. I like the car hot sounds. So see how I'm coming straight in and I'm hitting him with these like body punches and hooks? He's like, great, you're kind of getting the idea of coming to the side, but my body is still coming straight forward. So that's why he's trying to remind me to do this lateral movement to come back to center. That's the leg kick out that he's talking about. He hunted me there, which is not how you do it. But So he's saying that with what I just did, the opponent puts their leg up. Like, they get kind of shocked. And then when they bring the leg back down, that's when you do that sweep. So I get like overly focused on something and then it stops working because I'm not relaxed anymore.
So there he's showing how it's pretty much this like metronome of going back and forth, like a pendulum swing, left and right, left and right, outside with this lateral movement and he can hit both legs. Not what he just did. See how he came in straight and like jammed his own kick? Yeah, so he wants me to like jump across. The jump is not the important part, it's the lateral movement is the important part. You can step, but just make it fast. So he's excited because you can go after both legs. Like when he tries to block on one, you just hit the other one. And so it kind of gets this like relentless feeling and you're not hitting someone super hard. This does hurt, but basically by constantly tagging them, you get someone to focus on one part of their body and they get really still or predictable or like overwhelmed. And I'm just like slicing side to side. Like for me, it's just the pendulum swing. For him, it feels like it's coming from everywhere. So he wants me to grab his neck. He's saying chop call, chop call, which means like grab the. Oh. <laughs> I misunderstood him just now exactly the way I misunderstood him in the session. He's saying to kick his neck, not grab his neck. So see how he's turning the exact same lateral step over with that relaxed kind of like I'm just disappearing to your blind spot from a leg kick into a head kick. An opponent who's already overwhelmed that you're like pendulum swinging on their legs is not going to think, oh, I should definitely block my head. Like they're focused entirely on their legs and you do the same movement and then it just comes up to the head. It's very relaxed. It's interesting, he actually does say catch the leg and catch the head. So, if I hit his leg first and then do the same motion, he's likely going to get up on one leg to try to block that leg kick. And then when you kick him in the head when he's on one leg, it's very easy to knock someone back or over or out. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of interesting when he goes up on one leg and he's got his hands up because he wants me to um, kick him in the head I don't really see his open side because he seems very guarded to me like he seems all closed up but you want to kick so that the momentum is going towards the standing leg so if he's on his right leg, I want to kick with my right leg to like knock him towards the kickstand, basically. There I was trying to like ride the momentum of his kick the way that he had me doing earlier, but I keep stepping back instead of to the side, which means that I think of going backwards as protection from kicks, which is not accurate. <laughs> does not help you. <laughs> it's actually one of the brilliant things about the forward kick is that it keeps you, I mean the forward check, is that it keeps you really close. Like you can block a kick from really close and stay really close. So unconsciously that's teaching me to stay in on kicks to be protected. So I need to do the same thing in that lateral step to like ride the momentum of that kick. So see how his standing leg is basically the open side. Because he can't catch himself. Bang. So I'm, I'm understanding going side to side with my strikes, but I'm not going side to side with my body. 
It's the same thing as when I come in with that like lancing jab and then I stay in the same spot. It's the same thing, but with the lateral movement not being as dramatic as it needs to be. That was good. Getting over to the side after staying in the center for a second. I'm like starting to feel it. So here I'm switching stance backwards in order to throw that kick. But see how smoothly he does it? Not, <laughs> not like that. It's like he's just taking a step backwards. Which is, eh, I'll just step backwards now. I don't have the like filler movement that he has yet. I still stay very still between things and then end up being tense and rushing. But the way he's moving is teaching me to track where those openings are. See how he pulls his leg back? It's almost like he's just dragging it along the ground like a, a chicken scratch or something. It's not even a like dramatic step, it's just a glide back. So I'm moving laterally okay on that kick right there, but I'm not understanding how that movement can corral him to a different part of the ring. Like you can use that when someone's against the ropes or you can use that to get them to a certain part of the ring that you want them to be in. And it's just totally absent from my mind at this point. But that'll be like the next thing. So that opposite side kick after the leg kick is starting to get that idea of where to move him in the ring. Because I get him to move one way and then you hit them on the other side and they just, it's like uh, when you're playing chess and you're trying to like get someone over into the corner, you have to keep moving the pieces so that they only have one or two moves. When you limit your opponent's options, they become more predictable. So here I'm trying to use the golden kick more and like hide that kick by bringing it up the side of his body. And he's saying that you can get it up into a head kick from the same thing. So again, I was doing the same thing over and over again. He's like, no, work it into everything else. There's this thing where even if you're doing a technique correctly, if you're doing it with tension, it's not fully correct. Like it's hard to execute because people can see it. A lot of teachers, after they teach you something, they know what you're going to do because they just taught it to you. And so it becomes hard to do because they're anticipating it. So one of the reasons he wants you to mix it all in is so that he doesn't know necessarily what's coming and my feeling out where it goes is more accurate because your teacher will affect the effectiveness of it by knowing what you're going to do. So here he's trying to get me to teep him while he's on the standing leg and this is an important teep he's been working with me on which is turning your foot sideways. The reason turning the foot sideways is important is one, depending on which stance your opponent has, they're a very small target if you're hitting their front side. But I also have to turn my body in order to get around his block. See how he's bringing his leg up for the block? If I don't turn my foot, I'm going to jam into his leg. But I can kind of twist and close my hip and get past his block. And then that's it.
while he's on one foot. So here he's showing me the timing on that, especially because I'm like just rhythming in the same spot instead of actually using lateral movement. So I'm easy to predict and he can time that kick as I'm trying to come in. It's amazing. I like think that I'm going side to side and I'm totally in the same spot all the time. So here he's showing how that's a small target, yeah? And so he's saying either use the other foot or turn very sideways. This is especially difficult for uh, Southpaw versus Orthodox because your front sides are towards each other. So if you favor a front teat, you're hitting a very, very small closed side target. So turning the foot makes that a better teat. And it's harder to catch. <laughs> so he wants me to get the leg out of the way and throw that kick immediately. I'm losing distance with the way that I'm stepping back, whereas if I did that chicken scratch pullback that he was doing earlier, um, my kick would be stronger and closer. It was fast. But... <laughs> hopping out of the way. This is, where we practice, this is an incredibly small ring. This is like, I don't even know if this is half the size. It's like a third of the size of a regular size ring. What's great about that is you're constantly putting someone in the ropes. Like you're constantly getting someone to the edge. So remembering to like corral people is this constant thing to be working on in such a tiny space. When you go into a real size ring, you have more like breathing room. But I keep stuffing myself. Like every time he gets near the ropes, I lose my understanding of distance. And so he's trying to get me to kick his head when he's on the ropes because he's like, there's nowhere to go. So he's setting that up with the punch, but it needs to be snappy. See how he just showed me how his gliding fake cause this response in me. He's trying to get me to understand that, to like force the response from him. <laughs> this is when we both start getting tired. <laughs> So here he's showing me how to enter the clinch. So remember how he told me not to step forward on that <laughs> on that forward check? He's using it. But he want you to grab the clinch entry. Hand. So he wants me to switch my stance so that he can show this. So basically, you're bringing that forward check as a block, but then you're stepping forward controlled rather than like landing at someone's range where they can attack you and you're grabbing at the moment that you're coming down with that foot. 
You're over. She overturned. She turned. So, Kevin doesn't like this because I have this tendency to overturn when I grab with my left hand, which is actually Overturned. one of the reasons that Karahat changed me to self in the first place. Mm. But see how I'm grabbing around his guard? And because as I land, I'm putting my knee kind of down towards his knee, it keeps me from overturning. But he's trying, Karahat is trying to explain that if I, know, I grab with my right yeah, arm, but you're gonna, he can come you have a bad habit around that, that same side. side and throw my head you forward, know. which is one of his favorite moves. It's, I don't know not. female fighters who do that, but he's teaching me something. So see how he's grabbing? If my stance is other than how it is, I can throw him off of me. So that knee blocks the knee at the same time. So if I try to knee him while he's coming in, he blocks with that forward check. And then when he lands down with his left knee that you're coming in, it's your front side now, you kind of land with your knee bent towards the opponent's thigh. So you have to be close enough that as you step down, you're like grabbing. You can't be far away. So you don't want to reach out with your ass back. You have to like land into the grab. And then you need to control the opposite arm. So if I grab with my left arm, I need to control his other arm with my right arm. Like immediately. See how... As I'm coming forward with my right side, he's just pushing it. That's what he's trying to get me to switch the stance for. Look at his foot, his left leg, as he lands. He lands with his body not turned sideways, but with his leg coming across to almost bar the opponent's stance. I'm stepping right between his feet, which is not right. When I put my knee kind of into his thigh, that's what he likes. See where his thigh is and how he's still. He's like, if you come too far to the outside, see how our bodies were matched in the part where he's like, no. Whereas here, because he's turned somewhat sideways, he's very hard to knee. Very dangerous. <laughs> there I'm trying to do it and kind of too far away I'm not committing to the like latch as I land and I don't understand the foot part yet see how he's moving out of the way that's why I have to step across and land with that knee to follow him. See, I'm not figuring it out. There. See how he's cutting me off by landing right in front of my legs? Bong. See how he tracked me? If you go there, you're just going to slip away. It's really important, though, to look at how when you latch onto the back of the head, the elbow, my elbow, is in front of his shoulder. You don't want to overturn and get your elbow past somebody, because then you lose all of your leverage. And he's basically just shoving me off, like he's basically just popping my arms up. See how he works his way out using his shoulders? That's my next phase, the shoulder work. Like, right now I'm mopping floors, but then I wash the legs. <laughs> That's the shoulders. <laughs> so he's trying to show me how not to, like, chase your opponent, but to cut them off as you land. This is super close distance corralling, basically. <laughs> See how he's getting out of the way. He's following for sides instead of like 
So you don't just stick your front side in the front and try to grab someone. You can keep switching sides as you're chasing after them because they're switching sides if they're moving backwards. If they just keep moving back in their same stance, you don't have to do that. Look at how he just keeps me off of him. <laughs> Here he's going to teach me again why I'm not grabbing with that side. See how that was open. So look, I'm southpaw. He's orthodox. So if I try to grab with my front hand, that right elbow is open. That means he's open too. So I could throw my left elbow. So see how I have to like gauge the distance to really latch on with a single step? And I have to keep my hips in. <laughs> He just ignored that completely. <laughs> so when you get this like position over someone, you put your weight down on them. So I hooked his arm and he wants me to just put my weight down. I'm not doing it. I'm pulling my ass back and like pulling him. But he wants me to put my body over him and like get heavy. So here I'm trying to like track him and he's asking me whether or not I understand. What he means is do I feel what that is? He's like, your knee is okay, but your grabbing isn't quite right. Because <laughs> he just keeps slipping out. Karahat has this incredible, we call it his crab walk. He does it against the ropes and he just like scurries out to the side and he makes his opponent look like such an ass when he does it. He can feel how he can escape out the side, which is why he's telling me my latch isn't good. And that's also why that foot lands against his leg, is to be able to track him when he tries to scoot out. So here again, I'm pulling him down, which is good, it's tiring, but I'm not I'm using my strength because I'm pulling instead of putting my weight over him and just being heavy. So he's, he likes this word sure. So when you're sure, it means that your distance is certain, right? So he wants me to get close enough that when I do that single switch stance forward, I'm going to land latched on. It's like hitching a trailer or something. So I was trying to pull him back there with my arms on his shoulders and he just popped me off like over his head like taking off a helmet. That's why elbows are important to get him into the collarbone. It's part of the latch. See how he is closing his shoulder up to his chin to be protected. You don't want to be open. You don't want to leave your jaw open as you're grabbing like I just did with my right hand. <laughs> so he's saying don't reach. See how he's not like bringing his arm around? It's straight as it latches on. You don't want to go wide. It's not a swing around. And I'm landing with my hips too far away, which is why he's having such an easy time popping me off. And now I need to swim my arm to the inside to control that arm. That was good switching sides right there. You can just keep doing that. Diesel noise, wicked good at that switching uh, which side his lock is on like while you're trying to wriggle out of it. So 
I'm doing what he's been complaining about the whole time, which is that I'll do the move and then just stop. <laughs> See how I pause? Because I don't have the next move after that knee. You have to keep transitioning. So he reached around and pushed my head. He's saying I can do it too. I can't. Because <laughs> I'm too far away. So that's how he gets out super fast, like the moment someone touches his neck. He uses his shoulder and he rolls out. And it pushes my head forward, so I end up kind of like face diving. <laughs> so he's telling me only grab with the left hand because he can do that twisting out thing. See how he's doing that on my right side? That also is more avoidable if I bring that left side across into his thigh. Like where my foot lands is important for that. See how he like brings his body to a three-quarter turn as he lands? And I totally just didn't. See how he can't turn me there? So he's explaining why you teach this trigger of landing the way that you do and latching the way that you do. This is super complicated for me because I've been training this trigger of grabbing with my right hand for the past like four months. The switch, like bringing that forward check up and landing with the left, is much better than just grabbing with the left. But it still requires me to like re associate how I'm coming into the clinch. Still staying too far away when I latch. I should be like on him when I latch. And then see how because he keeps his right arm up by his head and I'm forced to reach around it, he's able to push that arm off more easily. So from the protective end, when someone's coming in to clinch you, keep your guard up on the inside like that because then you can push people off. He's crazy strong. Like, he's like, no, it's easy. I'm just doing this light stuff. Like, it's that weird, like, ant strength <laughs> where he's not really doing anything, but it's just super firm. He's talking about himself. He's like, I'm not a strong pincher. I just frustrate the hell out of everybody <laughs> and elbow them. <laughs> See how I'm looking at him? <laughs> I'm totally frustrated. So I'm just trying to cut him off now, and he's basically just snuffing me. Like, his clinch is staying out of the clinch, and he's really good at it. And part of it is that he's constantly moving. Here I'm just gonna try to long clinch him. <laughs> pulls me off like a scarf. <laughs> Having a hard time corralling him. He's just moving like this much, we're not much inside the clinch. He's just doing a little like ballroom dance. Small steps this way and that way. Whereas I'm very linear. So it's the same as that kick. So, he's showing how I only need with my right leg, basically, and he wants me to do this, like, little step back in order to do a straight knee to the open side. Like, I'm basically hitting the close side all the time. Yeah. 
Because this is no yeah. pattern. Like, I can land that all yeah, day. Yeah. But then when I'm close, I can't get this nice, beautiful straight knee that could knock someone out. So he wants this little skip step back. Step. Bong. Not that. <laughs> But close. So you just make space by this little like skip step back. But I'm bringing my butt back, which you don't have to do. It's the whole body comes back a slight bit, and then you close the space immediately with the knee. Relax more, at least, now that we're flowing a little bit. But you can see how my pattern is to land that right knee, and then I don't have another move immediately after it. So he's giving me a chance to drill that step in a little bit. But he wants me to be protecting his grab at the same time. So you see how he has me keeping my right arm up so that he can't grab me? So he's basically saying you want to create this kind of like circular motion because it makes the turns much easier and it makes you harder to grab. So as he's trying to swing me, I switch my side. And see how he's trying to push me by me going to the other side? I steal his momentum. Slick. That's so cool. That's very good. So he's basically giving me his like side to side as a key to like continuous motion clinching instead of just the like lock grab clinching. I'm super strong. I like to lock. I'm good at locking. So this is just adding to the repertoire, especially if you have a bigger opponent or a strong opponent or someone who knows how to clinch, being able to move all the time. So if I had brought my right leg behind, like I just did in shadow, that would have pulled him, but I didn't do it when my arm was on his head. Use your forearm behind the neck. You don't have to grab the head at all. He's just gonna follow me. His body will follow it. This is the same thing when he like catches a kick or a teep and just kind of like guides the momentum farther than it wanted to go and makes you very off balance. He's like, just switch sides. Super easy. <laughs> He's just snuffing my ability to grab him at every side. But if I keep switching sides, it counters his counter and it keeps moving. He's so nice to clinch with me like this. He does not like clinching. <laughs> Look how tight he keeps that arm. It's like having a um, foot in the door. You can always create space if you keep your elbows like that. If you like have them in front of your opponent's shoulders. He's so much faster than me. Because he can make those transitions immediately and uh, continue the momentum. <laughs> Just got an elbow. So here again, I'm trying to track him, and because I'm not bringing my knee across to his op opposite thigh, um, I'm too far over on his body. Like, I need to kind of cut across his body a little bit more in the way that I land. <laughs> the way he pulls in on those knees is so nasty. See how he's creating that space? That's what he wants me to do with that little skip step, but he's doing it all like... 
uh, just fainting it instead of actually doing the motion. See how he just twists his hip to dodge my knees? Oi! <laughs> Can you ask him about long clinch? <laughs> ask him about long clinch. We saw you in fight two. <laughs> oh, he thought that was very wait, funny. Wait. So here he's going to show me how he just did that. See how he steps past my leg? and then goes under my arm. It takes no strength. You basically are just walking past somebody. Oi. Oi. <laughs> I did it. I did it too. You understood? <laughs> because you don't have you to understand? use strength at all. <laughs> and I did. It's like going under my thing, but I didn't realize before that you could pull on the neck. I've always been popping the arm oh. on my arm. It doesn't matter. They fall forward. So you just, you step past someone and kind of pull, kind of pull their neck. Not as hard as I just did on him. It doesn't matter. So I'm trying to ask him about long clinch. We see you do too. Because he's done it in his fights. But he misunderstands me and he thinks that I'm asking how to get away from it. He thinks I'm asking directions of how to get away from it. But... This actually is a good answer, because when someone is long, that's what allows him to slip under the way that From he's teaching me right there. If they have their arm bent, they have leverage, and you can't get under. So when you make your arms long in the long clinch, that's why people can pop you off or like go under. So you have to constantly have the pull and push with the long clinch in order to make it work. And he's showing how to feel where your opponent's arm is and how straight it is or whether it has the elbow in for protection. So the minute you feel the length of your opponent's arm, that's when you can pop it over and go under. See his left arm, how it's kind of straight? You're mostly just stepping, but it kind of like pulls at the same time. Mm. That was a beautiful move. It's very slick. But you have to do it without tension. I, I try to train it in my gym, and uh, I get too tense, and so people tense up and you can't do it. You kind of have to do it when people are a little bit loose also. Yeah, but he, he doesn't understand you're asking about a certain kind of clinch. He thinks you're asking how to counter that, how to stop that, not how to do it. So he's saying I'm already good at um, the lock. So to work on blocking arms and moving. He's like, you don't have to lock, you don't have to use strength. Just keep moving and kneeing. It's like endless points. <laughs> because he's wanting me to move around all the time, that's not the long pinch really. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't want me to lock. So he wants yeah. me to like do this pendulous thing, both at a distance and up close. <laughs> 